So, uh, <clears throat> so today I'll talk about uh, the notion of tensor products. So, uh, so I will speak something like about tensor product of theories. And uh, I'll explain that this tensor product of theories is uh, turns out to be, I think it should be called Kansevich Manin product of, uh, of uh, cohomological theories. You see, somehow Sen, Sen Hu disappeared. <laughs> okay, still. He's back now. Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'll explain what is going on uh, in uh, one dimensional case. And in particular, so the plan, okay, the plan of the talk. One dimensional case and also no canonical product, tensor product. for A infinity structures. Okay, so maybe Dong knows all this. So then uh, it will save time, okay? So I'll speak about tensor products. And then I'll go to two dimensional case. And I'll discuss exa example 2A, namely tensor product for, now it should be called LM, cohomological quantum field theory. LM because it's related to logic of money and space. So it's a standard notion. So I don't feel, I feel a bit uneasy calling it my name, but, but it's a standard notion nowadays. Mm -hmm. And case to be, it's called tensor product for the lean manfer. MGM. So after I'll explain all this, I will start making uh, conjectures. So, and these conjectures, uh, so in making these conjectures, you don't need to know any physics. These are purely mathematical conjectures. You need, you should not know anything about quantum field theory. Everything is already described. Okay, so it's, so it's, this is the plan for my talk. And if somebody could prove it, I hope there should be one line proof or my computation showing that they are working. It will be very nice. It would be a small paper, okay? So after all these preliminaries, let me tell you what, it, let me recall, what is the tensor product in quantum mechanics? I'll call it point zero, tensor product in quantum mechanics. Suppose you have two systems. In one system, you have sp space of states called 
V1. And the Hamiltonian H1. In another system, you have uh, space of states V2 and Hamiltonian H2. So in physics, we are saying that uh, we can consider these systems as decoupled. So you may just imagine a spin of electron here and spin of quark here. And or spin of uh, another electron. Oh, maybe it's better not to say about another electron because of anti-symmetric anti products. The electron and uh, quark. Okay. So space of states is a tensor product. V12 is V1 times V2. So this, this should be considered as an axiom in quantum mechanics. However, uh, even uh, von Neumann never wrote it explicitly because it's so obvious. Okay. Then H12. It's an operator that is H1 here times 1 here. Mm -hmm. Plus one here times H two. So in this way, we may say that energy in the coupled system that is actually in the coupled with zero coupling is the sum of energies. And of course, evolution, evolutions of these systems do not know about each other. So nowadays. How people are saying, uh, you, you can see that these two systems interact only through ent entanglement, as you know. Mm -hmm. So there is a famous experiment about entanglement because states or elements in the tensor product are, are not just products of elements, but they are sums of products. And it's a property of uh, tensor product. Okay. Now, what we would like to have, we would like to have what I called homotopical or higher topological quantum field theory. So in one dimensional case, it will be mechanics. I have to, I, I have to explain that the definition that I gave is a bit different from the definition uh, that was given by, uh, I think it was Schwartz who formulated cohomological field theory. Actually, these theories uh, appeared first. They appeared in the great paper of Kansevich and Manin. They could appear in the earlier paper of Edward Witten. However, uh, he was a bit too slow to formulate it. He basically came to this definition. However, it happened that he stopped right, right before the last step. So we should not blame him for this because he made a lot. <laughs> and, and, and he did it not uh, after uh, Kansevich Manin paper, but before. So that's why we are very grateful to Mr. Edward Witt. So, so, so what is this? This in the case of, uh, of mechanics means that we also have Q1 such that H1 is Q1, and here we have G1, and of course Q2 is H2, that is Q2, G2. Okay. Now, 
in higher topological quantum mechanics, we may construct differential forms on configurations, say on configurations like this. So here we have configuration space with the distance T1 minus T2, T2 minus T3, etc. So here, here I have three points. Three is big enough to consider it as general something. And, uh, and the main object, and uh, this object is a functor, functor uh, is uh, like this. So we discussed it several times. So the, this functor is, uh, is what? In this particular case, we put something incoming. Here we put something outgoing. I'm sorry, I, I will need more space. Here, I put operators. Phi one. And here I put E to there. Okay, I'll call this T1 minus T2, T12 for shortness. And T2 minus T3, I'll call T23. Minus T12 H minus dt12 g. Here I put phi 2, here I put phi 3, and here I put e minus t to 3 h minus t d to 3 g. Okay, so I, I almost made the formula. So this gadget is a differential form. And this is hierarchy Q, EQM. Once again, I could play higher TQ FT1. And when I play higher Q, TQ FT1, I mean one dimensional, it would mean that I could possibly add vertices. Putting E to the, so I call this propagator, putting here propagators, and here put putting vertices. Okay, so this is a setup. Now, what I can do, I can integrate I along configuration space. So would I integrate I along configuration space? I would get a number. And we know what this number is. So let me write it down. Integrating I over configuration space. So it's differential form. I need to pick up top form out of, the, uh, out of here. It has a meaning. And this meaning is, is so-called induced operation. Mm -hmm. And this is on kernel of H. Of course we know 
that when we integrate over T12, we get G over H, that is homotopy. And here, when we do this construction, so integrate over configuration space, we basically have uh, in phi three homotopy, phi two homotopy, phi one out, and also permutation. Sorry, Andre, the board is cut off, so we cannot see the full line. Yes, yes, yes. sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. Permutation, I'm here. And here there are parameters. So basically, that's that's what we know. <clears throat> now, let us see what happens. So uh, before before I do this, let me say you that if I have theory on the graph, I can do the same thing, and uh, in this case, it would be. I'm sorry, let me put it like this. It would be, this integral would be M induced. I don't call it capital letter. So it means that you are contracting a cyclic something and you are getting induced structures. And if original structure was L infinity, the induced structure would be L infinity if original structure is A infinity, the induced structure would also be A infinity. So I'm just recalling this. Now, now let us do the following thing. Let us do the tensor product of theories here and see what we will get. So when I'm doing the tensor product of theories, I need to explain what's going on with phi's. So maybe this, maybe calling this one, two, three was not that nice. But uh, so uh, I have to rearrange notations. I forgot that I have to call this one, two, three. So let me rearrange notation. And I'm sorry. And I'd like to call this V tilde. in order not to mix letters, okay? So these are phi's that are corresponding phi tildes and, and this I will call V dot. And then this will be H dot. I am sorry for, for this relabeling. And also, of course, Q, Q dot is of course Q times one plus one times Q tilde. It's, and a similar thing happens with G. Now, let us see what would happen with this construction if I just consider tensor product of theories. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting thing. So let me consider the simplest possible case. So for me, the simplest possible case is this. Minus T H minus D T G. So what would happen if I put here H dot 
and G dot. Hmm? Interesting. So it's my desire. So I will get I dot. So I have no problem in writing I dot. So here I'll have out dot, of course. So tensor product. Okay, now I forgot to write to write it that phi dot is of course phi one times phi tilde. And the same happens with M if I'd like to have M. So I plug everything here and uh, and you may think that uh, I'll just integrate. And then I have an interesting question. So I'll erase this trivial stuff. What would be this integral? Hmm? Namely, namely, the question is could I uh, express this integral in terms of? Uh, the integrals that I already had. Because uh, when I have applications, I mostly have something like induced differential or A infinity structure, and uh, nobody is giving me uh, differential forms. Mm -hmm. But I can multiply actually differential forms. So let us work out an example. Okay, I'll erase this. I'll write it down. I mean this example in big letters. I will not write this tensor times one for simplicity. So what can we say about it? We can say two things. First, it is clear that that what will happen here would be a homotopy by the same reason. So answer would be and here there'll be some kind of total homotopy. So it would be the higher operation in the product theory. However, it would be good to invite here a mathematician. And mathematician would say that there is no such a thing as a canonical homotopy in the tensor product. So I, I think you never thought about it mostly because you had uh, many other things to think of, to think about. Okay. Let me explain you what is the problem or what is the issue here. Uh, 
the issue here is uh, that if you have a space V you can write it as cohomology of I have too many H's, but okay, cohomology plus something acyclic. And if you have V tilde, you also have this decomposition. So now we will use. Now we need to multiply V and V tilde. V times V tilde is we have this part plus we have this plus H A tilde plus we have A H tilde plus we have an interesting piece. So homotopy here is very canonical. You are not, you are doing nothing with cohomology or uh, with, with something that contains cohomology, something that you are not contracting. And you apply homotopy here. You put homotopy here and put homotopy here. So you canonically construct homotopy here in this piece. However, note that there is no, and it's important, Maybe for some applications important. At least it's, it's a mathematical fact. There is no canonical homotopy in A times A tilde. So let us see which elements here. So elements of A are actually something like E and QE. And homotopy takes, takes out Q since it's a cyclic. Here we have E, e tilde, U E tilde, okay? So uh, elements that are closed have the following form. So in this case, when we take tensor product, we have something four dimensional. It's still a cyclic, of course. And we have the following elements. E times E tilde is not closed, okay? There is also element. So there are, there are, there are also elements that contains single Q that is not closed. So almost all elements of the form okay elements of the form q e times e tilde plus e times q tilde e tilde so these elements with coefficients lambda one 
and lambda 2. For general, lambda 1 and lambda 2 are not closed. Okay, so they are closed basically only when lambda one equals to lambda two. Uh, maybe uh, or minus two. So so that should be kind of a sign. So basically, the closed elements here r q plus q tilde applied to e times e tilde it's a first closed element and there is a second closed element it is q e times q tilde e tilde of course there is not a problem to construct homotopy here we are taking this sum out. So the only problem is to define homotopy here. How to take Q, so this is definitely exact, but there is no canonical way to take Q out. Because E and E tilde are very different. So, would there be Pavel here? Ah, I see Dong appeared. Okay. So, Dong. So, uh, could, could, you could you give me two homotopies? So first homotopy is say that this equals to q plus two q tilde applied to e times q tilde e tilde. It's the first choice. Equally, we may say that. We can take QE times E tilde. So basically, we, we need to pick up some linear combination. Now, would these vector spaces be isomorphic? We may uh, play with symmetry. However, in general, they are not isomorphic, they are different. So here we have a fundamental arbitrariness in choosing the homotopy mm -hmm. of the tensor product. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. So how to do it? We need to have some input and then, but it's not, but it's not all. We know that somehow quantum mechanics solves this problem. So, so this thing actually is a homotopy. So here we have some combination of these homotopies. We just need, we just need to feel how it happened. Now, before we had a formula that homotopy was basically G over H. Now formula is a bit more complicated.
and then and here we have the common time for both systems. Okay. So it means that one Hamiltonian could be much stronger than another. Okay. So what would it mean to be stronger? Hamiltonian has eigenvalues called energies. So energy is inverse of the time while in which the eigenvector shrinks. Okay. So just imagine that eigenvalues, the spectrum of H is much bigger than H tilde. Mm -hmm. Then you may see what is going go. When we start integrating over T, say the first Hamiltonian is acting, I mean, how it's acting? It's contracting everything to to cohomology or to this uh, contraction. While the second Hamiltonian is too slow. It's not doing anything. Okay, mm. so now you see this asymmetry. So if H is much bigger than H tilde, it means that we are doing this second homotopy or last homotopy with what? With the, with the system where Hamiltonian is stronger. So in this way, we choose one or another. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in general case, we have some linear combination. So, uh, so I am a uh, hundred percent sure that uh, mathematicians do not know this reasoning because this reasoning comes from the higher topological quantum field theory. And uh, actually, I invited this reasoning. So basically, <clears throat> sorry, it's G1 plus G2 over H1 plus H2. But, but now let us see what does it mean. Hmm. Uh, just imagine that, uh, so H has eigenvalues. So, so it's very instructive to see what's going on. It's very instructive to compute. So just imagine that, that H tilde is small in sense of eigenvalues. By the way, it means that in some sense, G tilde is small because they are related by Q. So we have two time scales, scale corresponding to H and scale corresponding to H tilde. So if one scale is stronger, it means that we do this homotopy first. We make this construction contraction first. So it means that that when this thing is applied to this suspicious element, if if H is stronger than H tilde, then it means that we are taking Q from this term, from this. Uh, 
from this. So if H is much bigger than H tilde, we say that the total gamotopy applied to QE times Q tilde E tilde X first here, and it is E times Q tilde E tilde. Sorry, the the board is cut off from below. Sorry. Thanks. So I didn't want to explain all this. But uh, since this piece is missing in the literature, and uh, since we are going to study tensor products in more complicated situation, we need to understand this situation first. May I ask a question? Yes. So here we always assume that one of them, uh, one of the amatons is much bigger, right? So for example, H is much bigger than H tilde. But... Oh, so for example, mm -hmm. actually, as I could be comparable, it means that we can, we will have linear combination. But if if H is just like a tiny bit stronger than H tilde, like very small. Um, uh, yes, but basically we'll have, we'll have something symmetric. It, so it, it, it will not get ruled out by sending T to infinity at some point. I mean, if we kind of wait for long times, so it not collapses again. See, Okay, good. So there are actually two time scales. So first time scale is time scale T, mm -hmm. where this H is acting. And there is also another time scale, E tilde. So if they are comparable, we will get linear combination. Mm -hmm. So basically, we can make so so why so it's it's easier so it's easy to compute just as uh, professor who said just compute this homotopy of course we may easily put integral here so homotopy is an integral from zero to infinity. Of course, this integral would converge. So let us consider the eigenvalue. So in this particular problem, okay, it's it's kind of mathematical problem. Uh, so before going into the discussion, can I ask you one question? Sure. Uh, so. Sorry, you uh, sorry, the voice interrupt. Uh, can, can you hear me? So, I, I hear some echo, unfortunately. Uh, so, you, you might try again, you might try to fix your microphone. I think my, so, if you can hear me, I, I'm saying that my it's like unstable, so I will change until until then. You can just keep going. Sorry, there, there, I, I have some problem with your sound. So let me ask. Maybe it's my problem. So no, Donald, I also I also cannot uh, hear Don clearly. So. I, it's, do, do, there is some uh, there is some technical problem on your side, but your question is uh, very important. Maybe you can type it. So, can everybody hear me now? Is it yes. okay? Yes, much better. Now it's okay. Uh, so my question is this. Uh, so uh, the procedure 
you've just done uh, sounds is sounds like like this. Suppose you have two uh, nice Riemannian manifolds which carries metric on each, and you can do uh, Hodge theory, ordinary yes. Hodge theory on both sides. So in the I'll, product I'll... manifold. Yes. Black manifold of you can choose a can go pick. Of course we have a total manifold. The product metric. Yes. <laughs> the product metric is uh, is exactly and there is a the <laughs> and of course you can scale the metric on each component as much as you want. Right. Uh, yes. No. No problem in scaling. Yeah, and uh, is that corresponds to the scaling of Hamiltonian you're doing on there? You're yes, of course. Since uh, since uh, the symbol of Laplacian is uh, G I J D over D X I D over D X J, it's a symbol. If you scale metric, you scale inverse metric. So, uh, of course, uh, Laplacian is homogeneous. It has weight with respect to scaling. So you can scale one metric, uh, not scaling another metric. Uh, you'll have different, uh, you can play with relative eigenvalues. I see, I see, you're right. And of course you can choose a mixed mixed metric and that is, and it, it, that is no problem. That is equally uh, viable. But what, what I want to ask is, uh, whatever the metric you choose, uh, the higher structure you will get is eventually homotopy equivalent to each other, if you do it right. Yes, yes, yes of course. They are homotopically equivalent, but not equal. Not equal, yes, yes. Uh, so, so what kind of difference we can observe uh, by we can, so so we we so we can easily observe difference because mm -hmm. here we have two different homotopies mm -hmm. i see and also uh, so, the so, the homotopy you write on the board it seems like a bit extreme bit extreme case isn't it because it only adds yes yeah. um, yeah, so so uh, this so these two homotopies are two extreme cases. Actually, we have a mixture. So is this corresponds to what physics has said that integrate out the one of the component and construct the effective theory on the other one? So you, you, you can say it uh, in many ways, but basically it means that one, that one thing is dominating over another. <laughs> it, 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 so in physics, so if you want uh, to see how physicists are looking, you you may say the following thing: that the, the stronger Hamiltonian works first, and after the stronger Hamiltonian works, it does the homotopy. I see. I see. So I heard that the applying this homotopy transfer on a one component corresponds to the integrating out massive modes. Yes, on yes, you corresponding. You, yeah, <laughs> somehow you may say this way, yes. Yes, you may say that so called uh, ma so mass here is the eigenvalue of Hamiltonian. So uh, you see, when you write down this example, it is absolutely not mysterious. It's just a computation. I see, I see. You, you, you just take, you just take uh, eigenvalues of H and H tilde being different and you see this two, what physicists are calling two different scales. However, you should not uh, consider physics as a religion. If you start from the elementary facts, it's understandable. That's why uh, it's a pity that nobody 
uh, explain this uh, example in the literature. It's one thing. Another thing, when you say that uh, these two infinity structures would be equivalent, I would totally agree. However, as we know from the philosophy of, uh, of homological algebra, you should not just uh, stupidly identify equivalent things. If of it's possible, it's if it's possible, you should uh, keep trace of the equivalence relation. Yes, of course. Uh, then I would ask what kind of new mathematical invariant that you get if you keep tracking those equivalents in this case? Uh, I mean, the scaling okay. the so, metric on the one so, so, so here I don't know. So uh, it means, of course, it means that. Uh, so this equivalence is kind of homotopy on the space of infinity structures. I agree. You see, you see here, well, what we are doing here, we are just observing, okay, that, uh, that if there is homotopy, you should not ignore it. You, you should uh, take it with you until you ask the question that you are asked, okay? So while developing theory, it's better to keep to, to carry all this garbage with you, okay? When you have a particular question, you may say, I do not need the great piece of this garbage, okay? So for a particular problem, you need uh, some level of, uh, you, you can use some approximation. Namely, you, if you wish, uh, you may need only homotopies and you do not need homotopies between homotopies, okay? Because what we are discussing here is, is kind of homotopies uh, between homotopies. Okay, I see, I see. So well, everything depends on the level of, 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 of the level of cohomological problem that you are asked. After all, if somebody asks you to give a number, this number is of course uh, some higher operation. You see? Okay, philosophy. All numbers are higher operations. But uh, it, may, it, it may happen that you, you do not need to go too high, okay? So this, so this is philosophical explanation. Okay, thank you. But it is kind of interesting to play around with it. Okay. You can also replace <clears throat> cohomology uh, in the example of Hodge decomposition. You can also replace a kernel by, uh, by a cutoff. Okay, okay, so uh, of course, of course, when we are when we are discussing this, you are Sam, you are absolutely right. H. So what what was called this? The curly H, curly H. Yes. That was uh, cohomology. It, so it was the complex to which I uh, retract. Yes. So uh, in my papers, I call it infrared. But so 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 it so so it, it could have non-trivial action of Q on it. Yes. So when we speak about cutoff, it's exactly what we are talking about. But here, what I'm describing is the case when you have two different cutoffs. By the way, Dong, when you when you would like to study the problem that we started to the that we were started to discuss, namely the Foucault theory, right? Remember that we started to discuss Foucault theory in the multi-dimensional case. Okay. Just imagine that you would like 
to discuss Fukaya theory. Fukaya theory on shifts on sigma one times sigma two. From works of Polishuk, you know a lot about Fukaya theory on each component. It's not a component, uh, it's, uh, so how you call this? It's not a summon, but uh, in, in, in each factor. You know it on sigma one, you know it on sigma two. You would like to understand Fukaya theory on the product. Okay? It is just the case that I studied here in much simpler example. You have to multiply two infinity structures. And of course, the result that you will get would not be canonical. Uh, uh, that is exactly what I want to ask. Uh, yes. Question because. And, the, and, and it is interesting to study it in examples. Yes. So, so this was this small bit that uh, we basically did not accomplish before the Chinese, okay, because before the East, Eastern New Year. I would not like to call it Chinese, okay? Mm -hmm. Namely, this ratio or Fukai representative depending on what I would like to call a relative uh, strength of homotopies here and here. That's why, Dong, I a bit worried that uh, you were not coming from the very beginning because I thought that you may be interested in the subject because uh, it relates to your, uh, uh, to, to the problems that you are working on. And uh, and my talking makes sense if uh, it somehow touches uh, subjects that you consider interesting because of your uh, current work or because you express interest to that, okay? So that's it. Actually, you need to learn this phenomenon. Actually, one of the problem that I have in mind is we consider uh, uh, the Lagrangian Fleur theory on this product type manifold. But the yes, problem, the is, yes. And the problem is the Lagrangian on the product manifold may not be a product of two Lagrangians of manifolds. That is the particular case that I'm interested in. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Uh, if they, if they are dot product, you need to extend the space of objects. Yes, yes, of course. This uh, space of objects is extended. Uh, how does it sound? Does it fit into this, uh, this homotopy problem, or is it, is it something? Of course, you see, you, you, you just multiply. So, uh, so you you should go from uh, uh, objects like particular Lagrangian. Uh, uh, submanifolds. Yes. To, uh, to, of course, to their formal linear combination. And then on the spaces of formal linear combinations, you start having uh, structures. Like, you know, on the B side where we have bundles, for example, you have bundles. There is no problem to have a sum of two bundles. Okay, on the, in the algebraic language, when you have modules of a something, you can, you can always do two things. You can make a tensor product of two modules and you can consider the sum of two modules, yes? And modules uh, should be objects.
So it means that when you are saying uh, particular Lagrangian manifold, it means, so in, in this way, you are stuck with the enumerative geometrical understanding of the problem. Like in the so-called uh, typical A problem, you are asking how many trajectories or holomorphic curves open or closed are passing through cycle. And of course you understand that uh, the proper thing is a differential form that is Poincaré dual to the cycle. So we can sum them. But if, if we sum them, it would not be uh, an integer. So natural object in the construction is a formal linear combination. However, geometrical interpretation means that in some cases we have the preferred Z, Z basis, okay? So, uh, so maybe I can add add more context to what I'm saying. So, yes. So in the general framework of DG categories, uh, the element of the two tensor, uh, let's not say it's categories, two tensor product of DG algebras corresponds to the functions from the one component to the other. It is almost the same. So considering uh, the Lagrangian of the product space is somehow very similar to understand uh, the symplectomorphisms from the one component to the other or uh, holomorphic maps from one component to the other. That is how I understand this product space. And that is the reason uh, we consider uh, the Lagrangian in the product space. And of course, but, I want to understand the homotopy theory on the product in that sense. Yes, but, but mm -hmm. you should, of course, understand that uh, in the setup, in the very setup, you see, uh, you should allow yourself to have linear combinations of objects. Oh, yes, of course, we always allow such a combination. Yes, yes. So, so it means problem. that you, so you, so you need to allow uh, uh, combinations of Lagrangian manifolds. So manifolds. Yes, of course, of course. We consider you usually consider a bunch of Lagrangians. But here, but, here, tricky thing is that you need to think about this relative uh, scale of commodity if you want okay. to get a representative. Yes, right. So, so I have a so I have a, a several parameter choice of homotopies in this case. So if one of the choice of the homotopy makes my computation easier, then I would happily choose that one because in the end, everything will be equivalent and if something uh -huh. is easier, then it is a better choice for computation. That is why I okay, so, it, so it depends what would be your final question. So I hope, no, I hope, it's a wrong word. I think that you may think a bit and uh, invent question where uh, this uh, where this equivalence uh, should, should, uh, is still relevant. I mean the higher question. I don't know. I, I never thought about it. Uh, but uh, now after this discussion, I think that uh, it will be good to invent problem where you could not ignore this homotopy between the infinity structures. Okay, that sounds a good suggestion. So I'll think about it. Thank you. And uh, so what motivates me here, you see, is that I'm not considering uh, homological algebra in the way that uh, homological algebra has these structures. We prove somehow this theorem, we prove somehow that theorem. So we have a set of theorems with the random proofs. So what I propose is that the object that I'm teaching 
this higher topological quantum field theory is kind of universal tool that allows you to formulate different problems and solve them in a similar way okay because of course i am explaining this one dimensional story because now i am going to go to two dimensional story we, we can take a break yes it's all our, one hour yes yeah okay Thank so, you. so so i hope uh, so i hope i got you a bit interested in the stuff okay Thank you, thank you, thank you for asking uh, my questions. And I think I'm I'm taking too much time from the other audience. Sorry for no, that. No, no, You see, we, we are not one hundred of us. You see, you see, every every vote counts. So the rest of the audience, you see, if you can call uh, three people audience, okay, the rest maybe would uh, start to think what you are talking about because it's also a very universal thing yes so it is so it is this phenomena and uh, while dog one last thing while you are really interested in this other people may start to think that them that maybe there is an interesting question you see that that's the difference so everybody benefits, okay? So now we can operate. Okay, thank you.
Okay. So, so I am back. Mm -hmm. So let us continue. Sorry, may I ask a follow-up question? Yes, sure, sure. Um, because at one point you said before the break that we have kind of two cutoffs in the game now because we have these two homotopies. And yes. um, I was thinking if I could picture it a little bit like, so if we have a cutoff, right, then this is some kind of regularization of the theory. And here, what we're getting is apparently a homotopy between these homotopies or some, some kind of way to, I don't know, like go from one cutoff to the other. So can I, can I think of this as being kind of an keeping track how the theories depends on these different cutoffs? Is it, is it clear what uh, I want to say? Uh, so what you so what you are saying is very relevant, and uh, uh, because uh, this thing uh, is called uh, Zwiebach equivalence. Mm -hmm. So actually, Barton Zwiebach in the year ninety two and ninety three realized actually without great help of mathematicians. At least they never uh, became a co-authors in, in, in his papers. That uh, in the string theory, that string theory is not the single uh, theory. Actually, there is a family of string theories that depend on uh, such cutoffs. So, so you may decompose the string vertices and string propagators, so string vertices, actually form a infinity structure of the special kind. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he but he said but he explained that amplitudes are invariant. However, string vertices are only equivalent. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is called the. Uh, Zwiebach uh, renormalization group. Mm -hmm. so, so it is similar, but not uh, exactly the same, because here we have some game uh, be because of the tensor product structure. I see. You see, if you have one eigenvalue of the first system, you could not say that it is big or small, because you have uh, infinite time mm -hmm. to integrate. Mm -hmm. So everything is uh, one if you compare it to infinity. Yes. However, if you have two, like in this tensor product structure, you may compare, and this, and this, potentially, this becomes interesting. Mm -hmm. So actually, okay, I cannot stop uh, playing the playing games here. Uh, namely, namely, there are structures that depends that may depend on homotopy, and then in the space of all possible homotopies, you can choose a cycle and integrate something along the cycle. Mm -hmm. And the and the, if you think uh, it's crazy, just imagine uh, the role of the matrix in two-dimensional theory. Actually, matrix, different matrix, correspond to to homotopies, mm -hmm. at least to D star homotopy, where you have Dram, and then you have D star. Okay, now, now you study the differential form over matrix. So, over, so in general, over homotopies. 
And this differential form could very well have periods. And, uh, and this is also a way to look at the so-called, uh, say, string theory. When we have something over the moduli space of uh, conformal classes of metrics and metrics are homotopies. Mm -hmm. So if you try to think, think about it more abstractly, yes, these higher theories in some sense are cycles in the space of homotopies. So actually, I would like to say that the proper mathematical theory Is not, uh, I, I cannot say it's not studied. I would say that uh, clearly different mathematicians know pieces of it, but they were not, they are not making a textbook out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this hierarchy of homotopy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, so now let me tell you. Okay, so after I discuss this, let me do one more thing. First, observe that uh, in this formula, I have a point wise multiplication of differential form. So like, like an hour ago, no, it's even here. I said that there are two things. I, that is a differential form and integral over configuration space. By the way, here, you may consider not only integral of our configuration space. Here you may also consider integral of the cycle in configuration space. Mm -hmm. Okay, so while integral of a complete configuration space is the higher operation, so it is like scattering amplitude in field theory or in string theory. The integral over cycles, maybe it's even interesting to consider the integral over chains. Why not? Is a new object. So historically, this object was introduced in, into science by uh, Kansevich and Manin. I don't remember exact year. I think around 94 or 95. When they put, uh, so it, it was called by Schwarz, cohomological theory. So idea is to, to consider I, okay, I will write it down. So in so-called cohomological quantum field theory, you just consider integral of i over cycles. Okay. So I propose something more radical to consider differential form. It means that so in cohomological field theory, you say that you can integrate over cycle in the configuration space. I propose more radical thing. I propose to consider differential form and differential form could be integrated against any chain, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's important. In particular, uh, in on the the level of cohomological field, quantum field theory, you could not uh, treat one dimensional story. 
because it has boundaries, it has, uh, so here we have chains. It's not clear what is compact, what is not compact. You are integrated along the array. You have kind of factorization. So you have boundary because in some sense, when you consider R in one dimensional case, in some sense, it has boundary, okay? So it has infinities that you need to take into account. And you could not properly formalize it in this language. So that's why I propose to generalize this language to like this. So I'll write a picture. So here could be configuration space, actually modular space. When you integrate over cycles, it's okay, cohomology. Maybe, okay. Quantum field theory. When you can integrate over chains, it is a higher topological quantum field. And I prefer to work on this level. So if you can integrate over chains, so you have differential forms, you can have point-wise multiplication. It's very strong. If you can integrate only over cycles, you need to study compactification and uh, define what is called kansevich manin tensor product. In kansevich manin tensor product, you say that that if you have an object that you can integrate over cycles, it means uh, for them, I takes values in cohomologies, in cohomology of the space of the modular space, then you can uh, take a product because there is a product from cohomology. But now you may think, what is the origin of this product? And actually the origin of this product is for me, the point uh, like multiplication on the level of differential forms or any other equivalent resolvent, okay? Mm -hmm. You may consider something like simplicial complex, etc. But you, but you may consider something. Okay. So I have to explain this difference. So after all these preliminaries, I would say that we can easily go to two dimensional case. So to go to two dimensional case, I need to add G minus so G minus was something that corresponded to adding a circle with a coordinate phi. And G minus is a contraction with a vector field that rotates this circle. So on the, on the cohomological level, we introduce another generator G minus and multiply it by D phi. And this G minus has to anti-commute with everything else. So you may call appearance of this G minus by so-called circle action, okay? So in other terms, when you have the space of states, you may ask, if these space are differential forms on the loop space of some manifold. So would you be a loop space? You loop space is equipped with a very special uh, vector field. 
called rotation of the loop. And since you have differential forms, you should be equipped with the contraction with the rotation of the loops. So if you have something like differential form on the space of loops, you have this super group, u1, 1, 1, comma 1. It means here we have rotation and here you have contraction. L. L, D over D phi, I, D over D phi. But if you don't care about how, how it is the loop space, you may say that you will consider something invariant with respect to D over D phi because uh, you can always average, okay? Okay, if you, if you consider cohomology, you can average over this phi. And uh, you have the old generator, this one. And this is G minus. And when you are writing such uh, expression that I wrote, You go from the particle to string, to closed string, with this G minus. And the appearance of this G minus changes you, changes you the homotopical or homo, the homological content of the theory. So in this case, we have I that, that is now differential forms on the LM space. Once again, I need to say that LM is uh, C star to the power K over C star properly compactified. So the fact that it is differential form of LM comes from factorization axiom of quantum field theory, which in turn, which in turn is uh, comes from the fact that uh, higher topological quantum field theory is a uh, functor. So functor actually means factorization. This factorization may be derived from, uh, from the version of Siegel's axioms. Okay, so that's why we have this, this space. And now, okay, times endomorphisms of what? Of the space that I put on the corners, endomorphisms on H. Okay, now it is clear how to take a tensor product. I tilde also belongs to this space. Now we can consider a product. C 
here we consider tensor product. However, here we are not considering tensor product. Okay. We are considering not, uh, we can, we are not considering differential forms on LM times LM, no. We take this point uh, wise multiplication. That is multiplication of the space of differential forms. And this is the, what is known as the Kansevich Manin type tensor product. Because here you can go to cycles and you can uh, explicitly describe the algebra of cycles. Actually, it's not that easy, but you can do it in some cases. For LM space, I think it's very doable because LM space is a toric and we know everything about toric varieties. Okay. By the way, the fact that we know everything about toric varieties follows from the talk that I was giving about simple toric variety that was CPM. So that there is only subtle combinatorial data that sits in the moment map, as we know. There is an integral we need to know which poles should we take into account. So we, so we discussed this. That's why for the LM space, everything is, co is constructible. So we can take this tensor product. Now, now I can put a conjecture. So now I explained what the tensor product is. Maybe we may consider an example. Then I explained last talk that there is a group of dressing or given tal, given tal fork dressing transformations. Mm -hmm. Acting on what? Acting on these integrals, integrals of I over cycles. Now, the question is, No, the question, now we can write down, or now we can do the following thing. We can either first take a tensor product of series and also tensor product of dressing, of dressing matrices that were called G capital. And then dress. Or we could first dress and then take a tensor product. And the conjecture is that result would be the same. So this is the first tensor product conjecture. So I will write it down. So way one, we have I and I tilde. And we have two dressing matrices G and G tilde. 
in the, in the, in the line one, we first consider multiplication. Then we integrate over cycles to get cohomological field theory. And then we rotate with this. Line two, we take I, consider integral over cycles, rotate we take i tilde consider integral over cycles rotate and then take the tensor product so conjecture is that in this way you get the same stuff so I need to say what the cycles are because uh, when I'm rotating, when I'm rotating, uh, rotating, you see, I can apply rotation only to the solution to commutativity equation. But uh, important thing is that cycles are made out of uh, the fundamental cycles of the lower spaces. What does it mean? Consider this space, LM3. I'll write it in terms of sources. How to get its cycles? Idea that all cycles have uh, even co-dimension and that all cycles are obtained from intersection of uh, boundary devices. So LM3 is the moduli space of such configurations properly compactified. So this is actually what? So this, so this is already some complicated manifold. So dimension of this complex dimension is two. And actually I don't remember this manifold. So, uh, so it is some blow up. So it's, of course, it's birationally equal to, to CP2 or CP1 times CP1 who are birationally equivalent. So it has a cycle. It's interesting to see this cycle. So it has six cycles of co-dimension one inside it. They stand for either point three or one or two going to the right. So there are three of cycles of this type or going to the left. Know that here the order of components is important because uh, there is an input and output. And you may easily see that it uh, looks like the Lin Mumford compactification, but it is a bit different story. Two type of points, black points, white points, and one of the white point is marked as uh, an output. 
So that's why here you have six components. Then it's interesting to note how the six components intersect. In particular, these two components, and it's interesting, do not intersect because here the point left is much closer to the input than other points. And here it's much closer to the output. So intersection of these two is zero. And we have to play this intersection because it's the only way to multiply cohomology. We need to intersect uh, homology. Now, what if I put here one? These two things do intersect. Could you tell me what is the point of their intersection? So here, one, two is closer to zero and three to infinity. And here, point one is closer to zero than two, three to infinity. The question is, so they are of complex co-dimension one and I claim that they intersect at a single point. So it's an exercise. So let me tell you, what is this intersection? You see here point one is single on this component. And here there is a point two that, that is just messing around. So to be here point two should go to this out, okay? So this is a point. I have two degenerations. So this has no moduli, this has no moduli, this also has no moduli, it's a point. This point actually belongs here. Because this is the generation uh, of this. Okay, is it clear that when that this belongs to this cycle, it also belongs to this cycle. So, so it's it is it is the intersection, and in this case, it's a point. So the only thing not covered here is the self intersection. So what is the self-intersection? Of course, I have to study self-intersections. Otherwise, uh, it's not a ring. It's a partial structure. And having a partial structure, I cannot uh, do anything. Do you know how to do this? How to self-intersect? Maybe Dong can say. Dong, if you are here, could you give an idea how to self-intersect? the cycle. Now you really uh, want perturbs to one of the cycles or? Yeah, but we, but we but... cannot perturb. Here, everything is combinatorical. We cannot perturb multiplication table. Uh, so the, 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 the other way is if your cycle uh, is a divisor, uh, I consider as a churn class of a certain line bundles and restrict it to itself. That would be my suggestions, but it sounds like too. No, no, no it, it, it's much easier. You much see, easier. It turns out that when you come to proper structures, then uh, 
theorems are easy and proofs are easy. It's kind of a mystery, but uh, that's what Manin told me. So while we were working with Manin, we had some conjecture and uh, I came to him with a bunch of paper, with a lot of paper saying that here we have three or four particular cases. We can prove this case along this line and maybe this case along that line. And Manin told me, it's a garbage. If you have such a proof, it means that you just don't understand the, the subject. And I went away. So I was in IHES and he was in Bonn. Then I came to IHES, uh, somehow found the proper structures came and basically it was the proof. But uh, uh, it was not only the proof, I got a lesson. So Manin says that mathematics is developing the language. And if you develop the language properly, it just carries you, okay? The proper development of the language, he says, is uh, that uh, you can have uh, simple proofs, simple statements, simple proofs. So here, okay, here I can use relation between divisors, namely higher commutativity relation. So this, so what I know that one, two, three, and three plus, so I put point two here, one, two, three is equivalent to points one and three interchanged, okay? So I can replace this cycle that intersects itself non-transversely by, so I'll do operation called algebra. I'll take this to the right with the minus sign. One, two, three. Okay. Now I intersect this cycle with this cycle and this intersection is already transversal. That's it. So I can even write this, you see when I said one, two, three interchanged, okay, I could be explicit. So, three to one plus, so point two went three to one minus this. That's it. It's very easy to intersect this cycle. In particular, this intersects this by zero. This intersects this also by zero because three is to the left. And this intersects this by what? By, by a point, but here I have a minus sign. So self intersection of this cycle is minus one. So it's exceptional divisor, okay? Dong, Do, did you understand yes. this, this consideration? Oh, yeah. oh yes, of course. Uh, so you're taking a linear equivalence class of your divisors to exactly. make a make a transversal intersection. Uh, yes, but but instead of saying that uh, uh, 
uh, that I take another section, I just uh, take another representative because this relation follows from the basic commutativity relation that says that one, two, or in this case, one, three is equivalent to three, one. Because both are points and the space is connected. So this is a higher relation. And this high relation is just the analog of Kiel's relation. But life is simpler here. That's it. So you see, intersection theory is very constructive. It could be easily programmed <coughs> if, if needed. So in this way, I explained what is the tensor product. And of course, I will use the fact that I on the product on the generate surface is a product of I. So in writing these relations, so what I need to say, I need to understand what is say I on this component, one, two, Three. <coughs> Remember, I had a matrix. A I of T. That I could decompose into A I plus A I J T J plus etc. <coughs> And this was symmetric. And this was the closeness condition. <coughs> so I here is A E1, E2, A I3 because of factorization. I applied to one, two, three is A, I one, I two, I three. So these are matrices. And here is matrix multiplication. And finally, I here is of course A, I one, A, I two, a I three. So life is simple. We just uh, have these operations with the relations that follow from this or from uh, commutativity equation. So this is this tensor product conjecture. You may, so let me explain how to apply it. So you see, this is already too complicated. You see with one to three, with three points. So the simplest case is you have A, so you have A, I1, you have A, I1, I2, you have A, I1, I2, I3. 
etc. These matrices. You also have this. Now you have sorry tildes here. Now there is a capital I thought that is comes as a pair I one I one tilde. So A dot I one I one tilde equals it's very easy A I one tensor A I one tilde. This is not surprising. It's intersection over a point. What is a bit more tricky is uh, to have something with two indices. I1, I1 tilde, I2, I2 tilde. So I can call this I1 dot, I2 dot. So as far as I remember, the answer is not putting second index here and here, of course. The answer would be, as far as I remember, something like, like this. So uh, product along the first line So, so I, I need to take a pair somewhere. Okay, so let us do it. Let us do it together. So instead of guessing, so this guessing uh, would not help. So how do I understand this? I one, I one tilde, I two, I two tilde. So what is this? This is integral of I dot over LM2. Okay, LM is already compatible. So this is integral. So, uh, so I need to decompose this differential form into classes of LM2. However, LM2 is very simple. It is CP1, okay? So there are two classes here, class C and the point. So here I need to do the following. Here I need to integrate I over C and I tilde over a point plus integral of I over a point I tilde over C. So when I say C, of course I mean CP1 itself. So two classes, CP1 and the point. So when I integrate I over C, it's of course A, I1, 
I2. And here I have A tilde I1 tilde times A tilde I2 tilde plus all the way around A I1 composition with I2 times A tilde I1 tilde I2 tilde. Okay? This is the simplest uh, formula for the tensor product for A with two indices. It is possible to write down similarly A with three indices. However, one has to invert the intersection matrix. And this is not easy. Okay. Still, it is doable. And one can write down formulas. All the same type. So let me ask, is it clear how I got this formula? I was using, I'm using here the product in cohomology of CP1. Or in other terms, I need to, I had to use co-product in homology. Okay. Co-product in homology says that co-product of CP1 is what? Points, points times CP1 plus CP1 times point. Okay. So, I'm not sure that uh, Donald understands this, but Dong should know this. Dong, do you understand the reasoning? Mm, yes, I can follow the reasoning. Yes. So these two things come from co-product. So when I go to higher terms, I need to take co-product for the LM space. Huh? So I need to take the intersection matrix and I have to invert it, basically. So it is doable. But not that easy. I don't know the general formula how to invert it. It's because the, the, the homology of these LM spaces, they of course have combinatorical description, but they are described in terms of basis and relations. Basis or base. Base is simple, relations are simple. How, however, the closest space is kind of intricate, okay? That's why people still, uh, still are doing some topology on these spaces. But if it's needed, I can work it term by term. Sorry, may may I ask a question? Um, sure. In in terms of the pictures you write for LM two, like LM two should be this um, sausage with one and two inside. Yes. Uh, yes. LM two is what is this? Yes. So. LM two. So if I if I look so at. This, uh -huh. this is CP one. Because the only relative coordinate is important. Mm -hmm. You may say Z2 over Z1, and we know how to compactify. Mm -hmm. This ratio could go either to zero or to infinity. And when it goes 
to zero or to infinity, we have two points. One, two, and two, one. Yes. So but this is compactification of C star by two points. And this is CP1. You could easily see that these two points are zero and infinity. Yes, so in, in the calculation of the tensor product, right? You said by definition, you should kind of wedge the forms I and I tilde. Yes, so, so, so how can I, so how are, yes. I have to wage forms. Yes. Now, and, mm -hmm. so what I'm doing, suppose I have a basis in cycles. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, suppose I know this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Suppose this is known. It's actually known. Mm -hmm. The question is, how to, so these are cycles, how to compute I wedge I tilde over LM, say K. Mm -hmm. So it is of course equal to this. And here, I need to have, here I need to put inverse matrix of intersection. So this C, this, C, this C is do intersect. Okay. So it's kind of like uh, decomposing LMK kind of in the basis of cycles. Yes, yes. So, so I, I actually decompose I. So I is is uh, co cycles. Mm -hmm. So knowing this, I know normalization in terms of co cycles. Mm -hmm. But then the matrix of multiplication of co cycles is dual to the matrix of multiplication of cycles. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, in the simplest case, like CP one. This matrix is simple because point times L times times CP1 is a point. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see. And point times point is zero and CP1 times CP1 is zero. And here, since it's a point, here I'm counting the number of points. So this is one. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I also have the, the intersection. So, so point intersects with point by zero. Mm -hmm. Just because uh, I can uh, separate points, they do not have common points. Mm -hmm. Or you may say because the dimension is not right. So point is Poincare dual to the two form. Mm -hmm. So if I multiply these two, two, two forms, I get a four form. However, I have only two dimensional space. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 similarly, CP1, does not intersect with CP1 inside CP1. Mm -hmm. By a similar dimensional argument. I see. So intersection matrix is very simple. It is this. Mm -hmm. So it is very easy to invert such matrix. And here you see exactly this n minus one. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Thank you.
So, Andre, you're basically decomposing the diagonal as a sum yes. of tensor product of each yes. factor, yes. right? And yes. uh, the the space LMK is the toric variety associated to the permutohedra. Is that exactly. right? Yes. And then we kind of know the cohomology ring in some sense because it is it should it is generated by H two if it is smooth. Yes. Yeah. And if we know the fastest structure, we all know can safely say we know the cohomology ring. Yes, we know it. We know it for sure. So you, you, you may also say that it is generated by boundary devices, so-called yes, boundary, yes. the generation device. But you mentioned that it is quite hard to find the, the inverse matrix and there. Yes, yes. Because uh, it has, it, you see, the, the space of, of, of uh, homology does not of uh, does not have uh, the distinguished basis. You can see it, it already in this particular case. So LM LM uh, two is easy, but then already here you have uh, two cycles and one relation that they are equivalent. It's not clear what to choose. <coughs> there is no natural base here. And since there is no natural base, you also have no natural, uh, okay, you have a factor space, you have a cosine. So uh, there is no natural uh, base on the cosine. Hmm. I see. But you, see, you know, hmm. it would be very so. And but without knowing this, so you can, in principle, compute it. But how can you compute n minus one without having a good base? It's a technical question, of course. So already for LN2, okay, it's possible to compute it by hands, but uh, I don't uh, have a good technique to to decompose it. You see, something like the action of the symmetry group or something. <coughs> so I was not going in this direction. You see, everything is defined, but uh, I don't actually know how to effectively operate it. But it's my it's my lack of knowledge. So actually, I did not consider this problem too fundamental. I mean, to prove this theory, because uh, I kind of I, I was kind of convinced that it works. Uh, especially after making some sample computation. But uh, of course, uh, if one works in here, one could make progress here and uh, make it better. You know, it would be like, you know, when you know how to add uh, integers, somehow you have defined multiplication. But it would be much better uh, to seriously think about this operation, about its properties, etc. Okay. <laughs> Similarly, here everything is defined. However, it would be interesting to find a nice basis here, 
Nice intersection theory. You see, would I be a student uh, or a postdoc, okay? And would it be a problem given by professor to me? He would tell me, this is not uh, solved. These calculations exist, but they are not effective. Effective, it means that you could not work with them for higher, for higher uh, integers here. But unfortunately, I was a professor for myself. So I gave this problem to myself. So there was no uh, big boss to push me. You see? Uh, to, to study this combinatorics. So, but it sounds, so modular technical difficulties, uh, there is uh, a canonical model for a tensor product of higher structures associated of to Adam space. Of that, that's what I wanted to tell you that there is a canonical computable model. But in the previous A infinity case, uh, using this homotopy perturbation lemma, there is no unique canonical choice, it seems. Yes. So yes. It, what would be the difference? Because, uh, because, uh, because in the in that story, where we had R to the n over R, so this ah, so so in that it, case, so it has a co-dimension one boundary, and but this yeah. ln case, you you only have divisors, not a boundary. Is that a reason? Exactly, exactly. Ah, however, I see. however, I consider this uh, explanation too geometrical because. Uh, such explanation is not internal explanation from the point of view of homological algebra. You see? I am not satisfied with it. Because uh, I strongly believe that all this is that all this is a piece of homological algebra. So reasoning should be purely homological. And uh, you see, so what I'm doing, so when I have a second differential that I call G minus, okay? So the trick is, I have another differential. So I may call it G minus, I may, I may call it some other letter or, or, and then I am creating a model for this G minus on the loop space. So it is kind of geometrical construction that does not seem to be absolutely necessary in homological problem. So there should be another reasoning without circle, without CPMs, okay? You see what I mean? After all, cohomology of S1, okay? Cohomology of S1, instead of S, okay, over C, uh, C plus C, over complex numbers. Then, contraction of d over d phi just acts here, okay? So everything should be realized not only on the swans, but on its homological model, okay? And in this reasoning, I would not need to have a swan, you see?
So would I try to understand this problem from the point of view of homological algebra? I would uh, treat uh, X trace one as a trick. So this is a motive where I have a representation of uh, the differential. That's it. Do you see what I mean? Circle is not necessary. So in the homological algebra, circle represents uh, the it's, it's this. It, another another differentials. Yes. In yes, yes, right. So making things double complex. Yes, you see, you see, I, I use circle, but circle is definitely not minimal model for this complex. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm not fully satisfied here. You see, when I'm uh, explaining something and, and I'm using not minimal model, you see, it makes me unhappy. I don't know. So you see, there should be an alternative proof without uh, so-called world sheet, without T's and without uh, this uh, uh, contraction of D over D phi's. So I understand that uh, use of higher topological quantum field theory here is just a trick to understand the homological problem that I like to use. Getting the circle is another trick. Okay, so these tricks are effective. I understand because somehow I invented them. But uh, such proof uh, looks, uh, if you understand, transcendental, you see? I, uh, I use too much uh, constructions outside the scope of homological algebra. <clears throat> the problem was a problem from homological algebra and I managed to introduce two real coordinates. One periodic and one non, and one non-periodic. Too much. So would the subject be properly understood? There should be a way to forget about this. Okay, you know, uh, consider Lie algebra for the algebra SU2. There are many ways to compute its Lie algebraic cohomology, okay? Mm -hmm. One of the ways is to understand them as the RAM cohomology of S3, okay? But this is a trick. To compute the cohomology of Lie algebra from the topology of the compact form, okay? Do you understand what I mean? It is a trick. But isn't it that that case uh, those three is kind of universal works for almost all the works for all n to find the you right see, of vibration in that case. Yeah. You see, I would like to say so. My feeling is that I can play with this trick. So the power. So while the power of this trick was not. Uh, fully used yet because uh, of course uh, my next step is to go from the lm spaces to higher lm spaces okay uh, okay so in that case you lose circles so you want alternative in this, proof case, for in this case uh, i in this case basically 
basically LM goes to toric. I think it's so. So proper replacement of LM, as I see it, is uh, then something like points and uh, okay, not only points, even uh, cycles, even cycles on the toric uh, variety. Okay. So modulate space of even cycles. So in, in this way, you see here I had white points and black points, and that would be white points and white uh, curves, if you wish, uh, together with black points and black curves. And uh, you can do a lot of geometry here. Meanwhile, all this geometry should have another realization in terms of pure homological algebra. Okay, I see. You see? You see, it's, uh, you know, it's like uh, Hodge degeneration theory. Everybody is proving Hodge degeneration theorem. I mean that. Uh, That if manifold is compact, uh, you know this. Uh, then you then uh, there is a PQ decomposition on its cohomology. So, sorry, I have so one. Are you, uh, so why you how did you go from this uh, uh, real case to the complex case of the last ah, one? Okay. Okay. Actually, 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 first, there should be a case like this. Okay, R2 to power n divided by R2. So this is the real case. So this case would lead to something like, like a two homological algebra. So what I definitely know at the moment, I am 90% sure that this case is related to so-called algebra of the infrared. And basically it contains in the, res in the results of my student Suhanov. Who is now working with Kapranov? So he de deviated from this problem. And uh, here uh, uh, we studied the so called uh, higher Morse theory. So it's an evolution uh, along two commuting uh, Morse type vector fields. So there is something cooking here. However, for uh, interesting application, I should also add here S1 squared to the power M. So actually it should be like C star square to the power M over C star square with some complexification. It should also be a toric variety. But uh, a bit more complicated. So that's why that's why I'm saying there's a potential of uh, loss of mining spaces and the uh, real version of loss of mining spa spaces that is, I don't know how to call it, more spaces or uh, chronological or uh, quantum mechanic spaces. So you, you may call it uh, as you wish. 
So uh, there is a lot of things that could be done. But I pretty well understand that this is transcendental with respect to the original homological problem. Because the original homological problem is that you have several differentials, several, several uh, commutation relations among them. That's it. In particular, the only relation that I need to impose about G minus is that G minus acts by zero on the homology of Q. So since G minus commutes with everything, it's interesting to know how does it act in cohomology of Q. I need, or I have to put an extra requirement. In the uh, higher uh, topological quantum mechanics, the configuration space uh, TIJ are real. Yes. So yes. So you so you may or should call this uh, two-dimensional. So for two, it's a two-dimensional uh, higher topological field theory. And uh, being being a field theory, being a field theory, it should be constructed from from these rectangles, okay? So you may dream that this is something like two categories. Something like this. So you have to represent two categories somehow. Put geometrical data like T vertical and T horizontal here. Write them down homotopies, you see. So uh, I am, so the more I think about it, the more I am sure that, that this is doable this way. But what I'm trying to explain that all these geometrical uh, data is transcendental. That there should be uh, constructions and proofs of all this that, 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 that does not use uh, quantum field theory. Internal proofs. Statements are simple. And purely algebraic. So what I'm doing, uh, I'm uh, formulating conjectures using this geometrical insights. So despite I invent these insights, I would not insist that you cannot treat it without this insight. Do you see what I mean? So is there a kind of a geometrical invariant theory you can change from real to complex? Of course. So, yeah. so, so, so basically what I was doing, I was just going from real to complex. Yes. But this complex, so I see this complex by uh, extra differential. Mm. Moreover, extra differential, this G minus, X by zero on cohomology. So you may consider it as exact, of course. So the question is, what is the use? What is the use of exact operators? Let me tell you something. In the standard Hodge theory, as you know, the 
Dalbor is acting by zero on cohomology of d bar. But still, it's good to keep this Dalbo. In the same way, this G minus is like this Dalbo. Or you may even put here the RAM, it doesn't matter. It will be the same. However, you see from this fact, we may get a connection on, on these on cohomologies of the bar over the deformation space. And this would be theta connection. So this exactness of G minus together with the fact that this G minus has cohomology gives us some interesting information about the system. <coughs> so that gives the anamorphism of the kernel. Yes, of course. And, and, and this endorphism of the kernel, and then you say, uh, this is changing, this, this cohomology are changing, this is fixed. It defines your connection. That is Hodge slash QG site connection. So uh, maybe the proper way the proper way to see it is that exact that you should not ignore exact things. So keeping this D does not help you to compute cohomology here, but it helps to compute uh, connection on the bundle of cohomology. So it's a place where uh, you start seeing uh, homotopy. So in deformation theory, you, you see that. However, uh, I'd like to be more precise here. What I'm telling you is just intuition. I would like to get deeper understanding of what is going on or the plan, of course, work with this LM spaces. Get formulas, get conjectures, get whatever you can. And after you and, and after uh, you construct something, uh, prove the theorems without using LM spaces. Okay. You see. So, so Dong probably understands this because Fukai category, category is just a way to put geometry in the place where you typically have algebra. Some, there is something that you can easily see in terms of geometry. However, Ultimately, I would say there is no geometry. Ultimately, it's an algebra. So you may think about uh, integral structure because of uh, mirror. 
However, this integral structure uh, should be built inside. Uh, infinity category, okay? It is it is just there. Like you have a Hodge decomposition of cohomology, but in order to prove it, you use uh, differential geometry. And functional, and functional analysis, and everybody is doing this. However, mathematicians are not satisfied with such proof because it's called transcendental. And people look for the fundamentals, for conceptual proof. It's called Hodge the Ram degeneration. Well, they are still looking for this proof because uh, they use uh, arithmetic. So there is a mathematician Kaledin who is doing this Hodge the Ram degeneration using Frobenius map on four algebraic manifolds. Well, for me, it's too much. For me, such heavy use of arithmetic is uh, as non-natural as uh, use of differential geometry. But I don't know the right answer. Neither in the question of Hodge the round generation, nor here. So uh, I will continue to work here using uh, higher topological theories, keeping in mind that uh, it is just a trick. At the moment, I consider it as a trick. Maybe somebody would, would explain me that it is not a trick, but And this is just the example when I understand that uh, that probably I do not need to have uh, this as one. So actually, it would mean that uh, in string uh, constructions there is no strings. It's an illusion that we have strings. Strings are just a resolvent of the algebra. Yeah. Okay. So I think uh, I need to stop here because it's very natural place to stop. So I formulated the, so, so summarizing what happened today. I explained the, uh, the tensor product structure on uh, real infinity structures and uh, on uh, infinity structures uh, enriched by a circle. Both constructions, so I explained both constructions using uh, higher topological quantum field theory. Then I formulated a conjecture that dressing transformation commute with tensor product. And, and this is a pure, purely mathematical conjecture, no physics at all. Everything is well defined. And uh, 
I explained the how to make simplest computations in tensor product. So it makes the story round, okay? Moreover, uh, I was able to identify non-uniqueness of homotopy in the real case with the obvious property uh, of the tensor product, namely different of uh, difference of scales that uh, each uh, each term, each uh, system has its relaxation time. And uh, when I multiply two systems, the behavior of the product system depends on the ratio of relaxation time. So there is a correspondence or there is an explanation of the phenomenon. Once again, then I criticize myself saying that explanations of, of the phenomena in terms of higher topological quantum field theory may be too complicated. And these phenomena should be explained without this construction, okay? Like, when you study deformation theory of algebraic manifolds, you do not need necessarily to take a smooth model of algebraic manifold and pick up Dalbo resolution. It is possible to do this, but it is not absolutely necessary. Okay, Edward Witten would disagree. But uh, at this moment, I kind of disagree with Edward Witten. I do not consider differential geometric or uh, quantum field theory resolutions and constructions uh, the only approach to the problem. Okay? So that's what I said today. Actually, I think it's enough for one day. Yeah. What would you say? Mm -hmm. So uh, I want a fool. I was a fool. It was not possible to explain this in one day as I planned. However, it could be explained in two days. That's what I did. So now I need to ask questions, please. Yeah, okay. so I don't have any let questions me, for today. Uh, let me I'm... give the last remark. Last remark. So, so I basically think that I know how to prove this uh, conjecture uh, if uh, one would use the uh, Haroshkin Barkarian description. Хорошкин, Маркарян, Шадлин. 
So they wrote a paper several years ago. I think like five years ago or three years ago. So that could be interpreted in the following way. That uh, that dressing transformation that you can see dressing transformation on the level of uh, of representation of the of what I called QG minus algebra. And uh, and actually, I need to admit that I have to that it will be good to have a, another look at this paper and use it correspondingly. So we can also see the name. Ah, you cannot see the name. Okay, so it's a hidden name. Okay. okay. I see. I see that you cannot see. So I. So I promise you that I'll change the markers. Haroshkin, Markarian. I think Shadow. So they were doing it not for uh, this space, but for uh, Dirin Manfred space. However, after some modification, this should be applied to prove this uh, tensor product conjecture. So it is the first tensor product conjecture. Later, I'll tell you the second tensor product conjecture. Okay. So I know why I never use this Haroshkin Berkarian Shadow. It is because uh, in their assumptions, uh, so it was not easy to put it into the into the framework of a higher topological quantum field theory. So, but maybe it's still possible to do something. Now I think so. Okay, so I told you something. You know, uh, while I hear while I, while I hear silence from your side, I still think that I told you something interesting. Yes, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Thank you very much. So you are welcome. We will continue next week. As always. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thank by you. the way, by the way, dong. So yes. are we going to, are we going to discuss